You're listening to Talk of Champions, an Ole Miss Spirit podcast with Ben Garrett. It's up, it's up, it's up, it's up, it's up. It's up. Friends and welcome inside an all new edition of Talk of Champions, your number six, number six ranked Ole Miss football rebels are 4 0 and open SEC play this weekend against Kentucky on Saturday, 11 a.m. Central Time on ABC. Ole Miss gave up its first touchdown of the season against Georgia Southern on Saturday, a 52 to 13 Ole Miss win, leaving Georgia as the last remaining team in college football. That has not a lot of touchdown. But the Rebels still wreck Georgia Southern, the best team they've played so far. And again, without necessarily playing all that well. How encouraging is that? Because I remember when Hugh Freeze was raising the bar for Ole Miss in the modern era while still struggling with Georgia Southern. These Rebels, meanwhile, are different. They are different. And our man Freeze... Showing over there at Auburn that he's still very much the, the same, that he has not changed a bit. But more on that in a little while. Trey Harris, it's time to consider that he might be the Ole Miss wide receiver goat. Recency bias plays a role, no doubt. But we got to consider just how good he's been. A.J. Brown, Laquan Treadwell, Elijah Moore, they may be your standard But comparatively, the numbers, especially if you extrapolate them over a career, he's heading that way as Trey Harris to GOAT status. That is a podcast, however, for later on in the week on Wednesday, actually, because you're inside the Riverland Roofing Studios. There's the little house up top, Riverland Roofing, for all your roofing needs. I'm Ben Garrett, at SpiritBen on Twitter. On Instagram, I'm at IamSpiritBen. That's where I post uh, the clips from the show here, Talk of Champions, as well as pictures of my daughters. Gracie celebrated her 12th birthday on Friday with a glow party. We threw it down. Riley and I uh, had a great rendition of I Just Can't Wait to Be King. I wrecked it a Zazu and then turned around on Saturday and spent most all of my Saturday when it wasn't watching the Ole Miss Rebels beat Georgia Southern at an 8U Softball tournament in Boonville where our Lady Reds and my Riley Buggies, third ring, got their third ring in four tournaments. And that Riley Bugs, their center fielder, I hear she's a, a superstar in the making, but I might be a little biased. For all your roofing needs, text or call Riverland Roofing today, 662 662- 6444297. That's 6626444297. You can visit them online at riverlandroofing.com. And like I mentioned, the warm-up games. They're done. They're over. SEC play has arrived. The gauntlet that is the SEC has arrived for the Rebels, and we're running a promotion over at the Ole Miss Spirit, omspirit.com, to celebrate the opening of the gauntlet. And new subs can sign up today with code REBS, R-E-B-S, and get 50% off an annual subscription. So if you're a new sub and you want to try out the Ole Miss Spirit, this is the perfect time to do it. Uh, It's going to be a ton of... Unique game week SEC coverage with Kentucky coming up on Saturday. Again, 11 a.m. Central Time. Um, so if you want to uh, give it a shot over at the Old Miss Spirit, try us out. Come hang out with us and really enjoy every single day uh, living and breathing the Old Miss Rebels. Go to the Old Miss Spirit, oldmissspirit.com today. Use promo code REBS, R-E-B-S, when you sign up and get 50% off an annual sub. That's code REBS at omspirit.com. Gets 50% off an annual sub. And come hang out with your favorite Ginger Shrek. Trey Harris went off again on Saturday. He now has 100-plus yards in three of four games this season. He has eight for his Ole Miss career, the sixth most in program history. He joined South Carolina transfer wide receiver, Antoine Juice Wells as a member of the Career 3000 Receiving Yards Club. Uh, Harris now has 3,130. They're only the only active teammate duo in all of college football that are in that exclusive club. So, Trey, again, full show coming about Trey on Wednesday, but holy cow, um, what he's been for Ole Miss, what he continues to do on a football field, but also Juice Wells looking more and more like that 2022 version of Juice Wells, who was inarguably one of the SEC's very best wide receivers. 2023 was lost to injury, 
never really got going, and he's caught a touchdown in every single game so far. Exactly what Ole Miss has wanted and needed and signed Juice Wells to be opposite Trey Harris. But even more importantly, playing even more of an early season, loaded up early season role because Deion Smith didn't make it. So, Juice Wells balling out too. And Jackson Dart, we all know what Jackson's doing. He's thrown for 1,554 yards through four games. That's the most by an SEC quarterback in the last 20 years according to ESPN. The second closest is Joe Burrow back when LSU in 2019 put together in arguably one of, if not the very best, most dominant teams in college football history ever assembled was that LSU team. And yet Jackson Dart is 34, 34 yards excuse me, ahead of Joe Burrow's pace. And I know cupcakes are cupcakes, um, but Ole Miss – dominated these cupcakes in the only way they could have possibly done so in order to make you go, yeah, they're right where they need to be. Now, the same token criticism is there. You're seeing it everywhere across national platforms. They got to play somebody. Well, they're going to play somebody this week. But we can only go by what we have seen so far. And yes, it's been cupcakes. But 168 to 9 going into last weekend, then 52 to 13, while first finally giving up your first touchdown of the year. And yet, Ole Miss still dropped to number six in the Associated Press poll. Of course, of course, Ole Miss dropped. Of course. And Tennessee took down ranked Oklahoma over the weekend, so Tennessee climbs. They're a good football team, but like I said on Friday, national media especially this week, now that you have no excuse, it's coming. A game is coming on Saturday. Save some of that Tennessee energy for these Ole Miss Rebels, the proof of concept with these Ole Miss Rebels, especially now that the real season is starting. Because I saw when my guys at On3, On3, the Ole Miss Spirit, OMSpirit.com and the field of On3, Andy Staples, Ari Wasserman, both tremendous at what they do, but both had Ole Miss around number eight in their own polls or playoff projections because both want to what? See Ole Miss play somebody. Now they're talking about it. Is this the Kentucky that played Georgia well? How does Ole Miss handle that kind of a Kentucky? Or is it Kentucky that hasn't been all that inspiring so far? If Ole Miss does struggle on Saturday, it'll be all the ammunition that prognosticators and rankers need to cast doubt on whether Ole Miss is really a contender. I say, you just win this game. You just win. Because Ole Miss is never going to satisfy its critics until it actually wins the, quote, game they got to win. Show them you got to beat somebody. And even then, they're not going to accept it. They've proven that time and time again. We, they proved that back during Ole Miss's NCAA investigative case in 2016. Who cares what Ole Miss is ranked now? Because I have seen the discourse on Twitter on my message board at the Ole Miss Spirit, omspirit.com, affiliate of on three. What? Oh, of course Ole Miss dropped. Of course Ole Miss dropped. It's because they're treating us like little Ole Miss. Not really. They, they haven't played anyone. It's fine. They should have moved up last week. I thought number five going into SEC play would mean they were right where they need to be. They're number six. Whatever. Who cares? They're doing things on a football field right now is Ole Miss that the Rebels have not done since they last won a title in the 60s. Ole Miss is superior to Kentucky. But as dominant as the Rebels have been, there are still areas to clean up. But there are so many more encouraging signs, too. That makes me go, why drop them? But that's also because I do this every day for a living. I get where national media types are coming from. So Ole Miss, don't give them the ammunition this week. Go take care of business against Kentucky because you are superior to Kentucky. And while you do have areas to clean up, there were so many encouraging signs, signs we wanted to see uh, based off of the first three weeks on into Georgia Southern specifically. Isaiah Hamilton, he dominated the snap share opposite Trey Harris, or excuse me, Trey Amos, uh, at field corner against Georgia Southern. And his coverage grade was so-so at 60.5, but he actually held up better than Trey Amos did according to gra grading. Um, and Jaden Kennedy, who inarguably had his best day as an Ole Miss Rebel on Saturday. And of this still young season, he graded out at 71.6 in coverage, a stark improvement across all areas for him and all grading for him where he was across the board in the 50s. You saw Wake Forest. You saw uh, Middle 
try to take advantage or pick on Jaden Kennedy. So, Jaden, you're going to Georgia Southern knowing that teams are scheming with this such good Ole Miss defense, ranked top in the country. First time giving up a touchdown this season was on Saturday. Uh, the only team left now is Georgia. The most, it's notable because they were picking on you. They knew that this defense was good, Jaden. They were coming for you, and you stepped up. They went right after him, and he held up. Now can you show it against SEC teams? Really solidify that back in for Ole Miss at that uh, rover, if you will. He showed Saturday. Jaden showed Saturday. SEC teams might have to look elsewhere. And you got Yam Banks, who was number two in coverage grade, 70.2. He's a transfer from South Alabama, was a longtime starter once he arrived from South Alabama in the spring and early on in fall camp. But then he fell back into more of a reserve role. Yam Banks finishing third of all Rebels in coverage is encouraging for the long-term outlook of this defense because Ole Miss has options like never before. And I feel like I've said this multiple times, but it bears repeating especially after the weekend. The weekend I spent with family, uh, Ole Miss loving family, who still go, wait a second, but what about – more on that in a second. I've made this point before, but it needs to be reiterated. Many years ago, when D.T. Shackelford was the only name player on the Ole Miss defense, I was out there at practice at the IPF when he went down. It was his final year. He was the guy. He was the Chucky e. Mullins Award winner, the unofficial program spokesperson, and the minute he went down, the eerie silence in that place because everybody knew. Everybody knew, coaches, players, media. It was over before it even began because D.T. Shackelford was the one player Ole Miss couldn't lose. How many players do you remember being that player for Ole Miss over the course of your Ole Miss fandom? There's no shortage of them. We saw that for years and years with Ole Miss football. The one player Ole Miss could not lose and lost. Laquan. Laquan was that player for the Ole Miss offense. And he got hurt against Auburn going in for that touchdown, the most devastating manner imaginable. Kentrell Lockett, my friend, 40, tears his ACL when he came back for his junior year, that 10 loss team, that disastrous team. He comes back. He was supposed to be the face. The guy is 40 okay because if 40's okay, they might be all right. But no, he wasn't all right. And that defense was historically terrible. Their best players were freshmen like C.J. Johnson, Yes, Ole Miss has to clean up its penalties. This team, this team has to, clo uh, to clean up its penalties. But the days of, oh, no, how do you make up for so-and-so? Because good programs don't have that problem. Good programs don't go, God, if I can just get Archie's son signed. And Ole Miss isn't that program anymore. Yes, it has to clean up its penalties. Because it's a worrisome trend for me that after the first few weeks, um, Ole Miss entered last week 14th in the SEC in penalties and still racked up flag after flag north of 100 yards. And it's not just procedural stuff. This is the stuff. These are unforced errors that can sink contenders. Taking your helmet off on the field. Just things you shouldn't be doing. Sloppiness. And if you combine that sloppiness with the chaos, the, cha the chaotic nature of 11 a.m. kickoffs, because remember back when those Jefferson Pilot days, Kentucky and LSU, Devery Henderson, Jefferson Pilot 11 a.m. kicks, that's where the witching hour, as they say on NFL Red Zone, that was the witching hour for any SEC team. If you drew that kickoff, something funky was probably going to happen. Usually it was Ole Miss beating Vanderbilt with a last-second 50-plus yard field goal. In your case, Ole Miss fan. But you combine the sloppiness of removing your helmet to celebrate, which is fine, on the sideline <laughs> because it can cause penalties, unforced penalties that will hurt you once the better teams roll in, such as Kentucky on Saturday. But unlike when DT went down or Laquan went down or whoever, Ole Miss lost Jared Ivey, didn't have him for Georgia Southern on Saturday, our guy. Jared Ivey, not Walter Nolan, not J.J. Pegues, not Chris Poupal. He has been the highest graded defensive player for Ole Miss this year, one of the highest in all of football. Old years, Jared's not playing against Georgia Southern. Uh-oh, is Ole Miss on upset alert? It wasn't even a thought. Ole Miss just simply shifted J.J. Pegues over. Another top 
three-round NFL draft projection for next year. And they didn't skip a beat. They didn't skip a beat. And they didn't move them over there because they didn't have anyone else. They could have played the true freshman Cam Franklin. They've got a lot of players that they like, but J.J. was the best option of all the good options. And when you have an embarrassment of good options in the trenches especially, that's how you can get over all the old stigmatized beliefs that you have. The belief that, oh, Ole Miss at LSU, that's tough. It's always hard to win in Death Valley. It is always hard to win in Death Valley, usually, in how we remember it. But have you seen the empty stands in Baton Rouge lately? Have you seen the lack of talent, the personnel issues with LSU lately? It's a different time, and your Ole Miss Rebels are now a standard bearer in a new era of college football. Protecting homes and businesses from the whims of nature, you need more than just quality materials. You require Riverland Roofing. Licensed, insured, and certified, Riverland Roofing offers not only the assurance of excellence, but a tailored approach to your unique structural needs and budget. To learn more about what Riverland Roofing can do for you and the community, call them at 662-644-4297 or visit riverlandroofing.com. This is Cali. With C Spire's blazing fast nationwide 5G network, she's got her fans in the palm of her hands. Live streaming her Mississippi blues from her phone wherever she is. Out there, wherever they are. Right now, get the latest 5G phone on us. Only at C Spire. Customer inspired. I want you to seriously consider the absurdity of this as Ole Miss people, all right? Or at least consider the difference in contention stages that the Rebels are in now compared to those old days. J.J. just slid over from defensive tackle to strong side defensive end, and he didn't leave a hole when he shifted either. They replaced him with a 6'7 monster of a former four-star prospect and didn't skip a beat. You didn't even notice. He finished at J.J. with the top run defensive gr defense grade, 87.9 of all Rebels. He was number four because he goes both ways. He does a little uh, uh, wildcat running back quarterback. He was the fourth highest ranked offensive player for Ole Miss, but number one for run defense grade was out of position J.J. Pegues because these Rebels are hashtag build different. Yes, his 87.9 grade was even better than Chris Pupal, who has almost single-handedly, I don't want to give him that kind of credit because that's a little much. It's a little rich, even for me. The stupid old Miss Homer pouring the Kool-Aid. But Chris Pupal has almost single-handedly, it feels like, solved what had been the longest-running Ole Miss football personnel joke on the internet. Can so-and-so play linebacker? As far as impact for his team, the team that could win a title this year, Chris Pupal, has been everything and more that Ole Miss signed him to be. He's led Ole Miss in tackles in three of its four games. And remember, he didn't start that opener against Furman. And I love this quote, too. I love this. Um, Ole Miss gave up his first touchdown, like I said, Saturday against Georgia Southern. And Chris Pupal, my guy, was pissed. How much does it matter that you guys gave up a touchdown? Man, it, it really infuriated us because that's not the, that's not how we play. That's we know that we are better than that, and we feel like once we had to got to the sideline, we just had to lock into adjustments, see what we went wrong, and what we need to fix going forward. But man, we when we got to that sideline, I could just see that 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 really hit everybody, and it, it just fired them up even more. Like because like like I said earlier, man, that's not that's not that's not our standard. That's not how we play. We play fast and physical, and that, and we got to uphold that standard each and every time. These are different times with different worries, different mindsets needed from all of you Ole Miss fans. Because Hugh Freeze changed things, to be sure. He changed things up. He made you believe in a different way. He recruited a level Ole Miss had never seen before. He took that Ed Orgeron playbook and he perfected it at Ole Miss. Now, Orgeron, he dared to ask, why not Ole Miss? And went and chased every recruit, no matter where they were, California to the best prospects in Mississippi, not allowing Jarrell Poe to go to LSU, going pulling Jonathan Cornell from California. He said, why not Ole Miss? Hugh Freeze said, of course, Ole Miss. Lane Kiffin has said, Ole Miss versus everybody. It's the natural next step. 
in this Ole Miss program ascension. Neither Ordron nor Freeze could get out of their own way. And Freeze still can't get out of his own way. He's over at Auburn after, after the Tigers lose to a bad Arkansas team and a Sam Pittman who is on the hottest of hot seats. And he still can't take an ounce of accountability, responsibility. He just can't do it. He blames the players. He's going to blame his assistant coaches. He blames the media. Bo Wallace had time for Hugh on Saturday. And I, I saw some fans, some Auburn fans, uh, taking his comments, I think, the wrong way, too. He will praise Freeze. We all will. I'll praise Freeze. He's a great football coach, great play caller, great schematics guy. And Bo never argued that any different. As far as schematically, when you needed somebody to draw up a play, he was right up there with Lane, or he used to be. I don't know anymore. I don't pretend to be an expert like that. We've all argued the same. Hugh Freeze, great football coach, but fatally lacking in self-awareness and personal accountability and humility. And I can say that as someone who suffered from all of those character traits for most of my life and still deal with them for the most part every single day, but I try to be better. He espouses that you are to be responsible and accountable and humble, but he doesn't practice those things. And I really like him. I like Hugh Freeze. It's hard not to like Hugh Freeze personally when you get to know him. He's a well-meaning goofball, I think. But when his back gets against the wall, at least in my experience, and I covered him for a long, long time, got many of a DM on Twitter. The first response for him when his back is against the wall is deflection and defensiveness. I, again, was the exact same way. I, I know this, but own your stuff. So that's why I say to you, Hugh, own your stuff. These are your players. This is your roster. Robbie Ashford, who you ran off, who, again, I probably would have too because I'm not a huge fan of what Robbie Ashford is as a quarterback. It's not personal, Robbie, but good for you, man. You're balling out over there at South Carolina. Got a 300-yard passing game. Meanwhile, Hugh, your hand-picked quarterbacks can't stop throwing uh Balls to the other team, sabotaging your offense. But you're the quarterback speaker. You were your quarterback's coach. Dan Werner was at Ole Miss. But, like, that's what you pride yourself on. Quarterback offense, that's your stuff. So, Bo's words, in my opinion, speak for themselves. And I'll never forget when Ole Miss went to Florida with Chad Kelly, that team that was supposedly so much better than Florida, and got dog-walked by, like, 30 to 10. Now – I wasn't at that game because I was attending a funeral in Nashville for uh, one of my friends. His newborn had passed away. And I admittedly will tell you, I run my mouth too much. I can get on Twitter and be an idiot. That's why I've tried to scale that back too. But my wife and I, Emily, we were sitting in Nashville at a bar watching the game the Saturday before the funeral on Sunday. I drank too much. I got on Twitter. We've all probably done this one or two times too many. And I made fun of Ole Miss for how bad this game was. I thought it was lighthearted. It might have been a little too cynical. It still was too far regardless from what, for the position that I'm in, writing about the team. You're not supposed to be that guy, so I'm not going to do that. I don't do that. But I did that night. And the first call I got Sunday morning was from Chuck, not from Freeze, from Chuck, because, see, Freeze wasn't going to talk to me anymore. Very high school relationship-ish. I'm not talking to you anymore. So I hung up with Chuck. I called Freeze. And the gist of my point was, first of all, I accept that I probably went overboard. However, why is the one thing you're most concerned? Why is that at the forefront of your mind the day after 30 to 10 against Florida when you were embarrassed, one of the loss, worst losses of your Ole Miss career? Why is Twitter from a pointless, dumb idiot the first thing on your mind? That's Freeze. Because it's always everybody else's fault first. Everybody else did something. Now, to his credit, when I said that to him, like, why are you asking me about this after that? Freeze was like, you know what? You're right. Be that person. Be accountable. The reason Lane Kiffin has led Ole Miss to the third most wins in the SEC since 2020 behind only Georgia and Alabama is because he took your blueprint, Freeze. I mean, his brother helped convince, who was on staff with you as defensive line coach, helped convince to bring Lane to come here because of your success partially. But he took that blueprint, injected it with overwhelming competency and program rigidness. If you're unhappy, 
It's a pro mindset, not like, oh, so-and-so. Hey, will you write about so-and-so because so-and-so is not feeling good? If you're unhappy, uh, it's a pro mindset. He gets it. Leave. No hard feelings. Unless you're Quinshawn Judkins, who just cannot stop talking about Ole Miss, including Saturday. Again, I'm trying person in the YouTube comment section to not ever bring him up. But he can't keep Ole Miss's name out of his mouth on Saturday. He said that uh, he was honored because at his previous place, he never got someone like Gus Johnson to call his games, and he was thrilled for that. First of all, ESPN and CBS have the broadcasting rights, or had and have the broadcasting rights for the SEC unless you're trying to suggest something a little more nefarious, which, congratulations on your first 20-plus run in two years. We just chill. Anyway, what we're seeing here with Ole Miss is unheard of. It's why I had to explain to my 60-year-old Ole Miss-loving dad on Sunday that, no, dad, you shouldn't be freaking out, losing sleep, dreading the road trip to LSU like you have your, virtually your entire life. I get it completely. I was the same way. Because I was your son, and you took me to Death Valley. But how we think about these Ole Miss Rebels is different than we had thought about those Ole Miss Rebels. Well, how we think about this LSU is different than how we thought about that LSU. That's a tough game. It's probably going to be a, a trickier game than it should be because funny stuff happens in Death Valley. But Brian Kelly has LSU as a mess. Nussmeyer scares no one. Malik Neighbors is not walking through that door. Brian Thomas, gone. And Ole Miss is favored in all of its remaining games. Now, I'm not saying Ole Miss is going to win those games. Only that if they don't, or if they just play poorly and win, the point isn't, see, that's the real Ole Miss, same as it always was. No, it's how did this team that's got one of the best all-22s in football lose to a lesser team? What happened? What went wrong? That's how... Alabama and Georgia, when they had these caliber of rosters, that's how they operated. That's how Ole Miss should operate, too. You're not assuming wins. You just have to ask the questions the right way. Not, oh, God, can Ole Miss beat LSU at Death Valley? No, it's why won't Ole Miss beat LSU in Death Valley? Because they should. And I'm telling my dad right now, here in the camera, I know you're probably not listening or watching, but put down those old guard uh, hallucinations. Jared Ivey. Our guy, the Ivy League, on the Talk of Champions podcast network. He can miss Georgia Southern and Ole Miss not cling to a 34-24 to win when they trailed like they did under Freeze to a lesser brand of Georgia, Georgia Southern Eagles. The same Hugh Freeze who had the talent of A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf and Laquan and Robert Kimdichie and Laramie. Ole Miss played kind of sloppy Saturday. The penalties are a problem. They played sloppy the week before. The penalties were, again, a problem, but they still beat the brakes off the best team they've played so far in Georgia Southern. I honestly expected a little bit more, and we got that a little bit early on, but the first two plays, catch, catch, touchdown, fumble recovery, and you think, oh, God, this Ole Miss team is, like the idiot Ginger Shrek has been saying, built different. But they got a little bit of that. They got a little bit of punch in the mouth. And how did they respond? Not by wilting like a flower. By winning 52 to 13. Now, I'm surprised, as, just as surprised as you are, that Lane Kiffin is the coach that recognized what Ole Miss is and also what Ole Miss could be while also getting out of his own way. You might not always agree with Lane Kiffin, but the man follows his vision and his convictions and he lets the results speak for themselves. Because I've had my gripes. You've had your gripes about certain things, but the results are what they are, the third most win since 2020. And I'm just as surprised as you all that it's Lane Kiffin. But he's showing his contemporaries, again, surprisingly, what actual personal growth Hugh looks like. Because don't think for a second, Hugh Freeze right this second isn't rallying and consolidating support around him at Auburn. He is. He used Florida to hold Ole Miss over a barrel because he's about self-preservation first. Ross Bjork was the same way. Ross is now the Ohio State AD. Congratulations to Ross. Same with Jeffrey Vitter. When all the bad was going wrong, was going down, they all looked to protect themselves first, not protect Ole Miss, while Lane has just given his vision over to Ole Miss. Now Ole Miss in turn has given it all over to Lane too. But just listen to this answer when I'm talking about accountability and what's been the secret sauce, accountability 
for everybody and not just Lane saying be accountable. He too is being accountable. What is the difference? This is the difference. Listen to this answer he gave Saturday after Georgia Southern. Ole Miss on Saturday is fans set a new attendance record for Georgia Southern, over 67,000. For Georgia Southern, they have packed out every game. Three out of the four games were at home against non-con cupcakes, and they packed it out. Middle Tennessee State was the second largest crowd ever. What do you think Kentucky's going to be like? Now, they need to stay for the, for the second half of Kentucky if it's close, of course, in the library. The promote, I know you, I, I'm not going to tell a personal business, a, a private business, how to do his business or what to do, but it's not helping the cause when the second half is being held at the library. Those stickers, second half of the library, that isn't helping Lane Kiffin's cause. So let's focus our energy then less on the fans who leave to go enjoy themselves in the second half of the library than on uh, the all around. Wait a second, why why not have the fifth quarter at the library, not the second half, the fifth quarter or overtime at the library? I'm just saying, maybe it isn't just always the fans, and yet they have shown up and they showed out again on Saturday. And Lane Kiffin, an accountable Lane Kiffin had this to say, the most critical fan attendance person for Ole Miss for the last five years had this to say. All right, so good to get to 4-0. I thought first off um, the fans were great, you know, to come out there uh, for kickoff and the place be, you know, full. And every angle that you looked at it looked like it was completely full, so that was great. And um, I know the players noticed that and recruits noticed that. So, you know, I've been critical and hasn't. So I want to make sure I point out, just like our players, when it was awesome. And um, so that was really neat to see. And I thought our players fed off and started really, really well, which we have in, in all the games. All I'm saying is Hugh Freeze could never. He just couldn't do it. And we shouldn't be surprised then when Ole Miss wins like this because Freeze believed it. Ed Orgeron believed it. Lane Kiffin believes it too. But the difference is, he has shown some personal growth. Yeah, he's got the salary. Yeah, he's got the uh, full program autonomy. But also, he's giving back, too, with one very simple thing. You know what? I've been critical. That was awesome. Hey, Hugh, you could learn a thing or two. Because you had what Lane had. Lane's done it better, and it drives you nuts. I know it does. Because you wanted to be the next Johnny Vaught. I remember you saying it. You wanted to be greater than Johnny Vaught. I'm just telling you. The quickest way is to first go, wait a second, you know what? That was bad, and it starts with me. And he's kind of done that before, but I'm talking about, guys, the preparation was bad. I didn't do this, but always throwing your players under the bus. That's not going to serve anybody but yourself. And Lane Kiffin, just as he will criticize will then in turn turn around and praise, like with Ulysses Bentley, who only got, I think, one or two carries against Georgia Southern. He was still the third back, but when he got his first carry, the whole stadium erupted, and his time will come. That's what Lane said. He said, this is nothing that Ulysses has done. It's just Henry Parrish and Matt Jones with Ulysses out of practice in the spring because of the turf toe. Early on in fall camp, wasn't himself still coming back. These two guys took the opportunity and ran with it. This isn't necessarily a Ulysses Bentley is doing something wrong, as these two guys are just doing really well. I'm saying the difference in perspective could not be more egregious. Now we'll see what it looks like for Ole Miss against competition that can really fight back. So happy SEC game week to all of you Ole Miss fans. You've made it. We've made it. No gas, all breaks, but some Monday helmet stickers as we get out of here. Helmet sticker from Ole Miss's 52-13 to 13 win over Georgia Southern. The Ole Miss run defense. Ole Miss held Georgia Southern to 37 yards rushing. It's fourth consecutive effort holding opponents to fewer than 50. It's the longest such streak in available records at Ole Miss since at least 1969. Helmet sticker, Chris Poo Paul, mentioned him earlier. The Ole Miss spirit animal that he is. He led the team in tackles for the third time in four games. He finished with 10, his most as a Rebel. He has six and a half tackles for loss. He's already just one and a half shy of his uh, season high. Helmet sticker, Kyrie Coleman. Kyrie started in place of T.J. Daughtery and had a career-high nine tackles. And this is after a game after he came off the bench last week and graded out as one of Ole Miss's very best defenders. Uh, we got to remember here, talking about depth of options, Kyrie shifted from edge to linebacker at Ole Miss. 
that's a position change that, it, you know, not all players are the same. It's going to take some a little bit more time than others, and it's taken him a little bit more time. We saw the same thing with Harold Perkins. He hadn't really taken the linebacker. Now he's out for the season for LSU. He's gone. Again, Dad, Big Bad LSU is not Big Bad LSU anymore. Those teams are actually thinking about Big Bad Ole Miss in 2024-25, so act accordingly. But what you're seeing out of Kyrie is an ascending player. He didn't hang his head. He didn't say, I'm going to leave. I'm going to get out of here trying to find somewhere else where I can just start immediately. He stayed. He worked within the framework of heightened competition. And now he's breaking out, um, as Ole Miss always hoped he would, the motivation of competition or, or legitimacy around him has helped unlock Kyrie Coleman. Helmet sticker, Jaden Kennedy, number two coverage grade for Georgia Southern. After teams tried to pick on you, man, you deserve one. You deserve a helmet sticker. Keep pounding, man. Um, helmet sticker, Jackson Dart, he reached 10,000 yards of total offense for his career. He's one of just 13 active players in all divisions of college football to reach the 10K mark. He passed Chad Kelly for the first, fourth most touchdowns responsible for by a Rebel. And if Jackson Dart leads Ole Miss to a title, uh, I say, so long Manning way, just don't lower the on-campus speed limit to two. That would really suck. And my last helmet sticker, Trey Harris. Folks, he might be the best wide receiver to ever play at Ole Miss, and that is so hard for me to say because y'all know A.J. Brown's my dude. But the numbers are the numbers, and we're going to get into them on Wednesday in an all-new edition of Talk of Champions. Thank you for joining me for this one in the Riverland Roofing Studios. For all your roofing needs, text or call Riverland Roofing today at 662-644-4297. That's 662-644-4297. You can visit them online at riverlandroofing.com. Like I mentioned, the warm-up games, they're over. They're done. It's the SEC gauntlet time. So if you're not a subscriber at the Old Miss Spirit, jump on with us at the Old Miss Spirit, omspirit.com. We're celebrating this SEC opening week. New subs can sign up today with code REBS, R-E-B-S, REBS, R-E-B-S, and get 50% off an annual sub. So go to the Old Miss Spirit, omspirit.com, sign up for a sub today, and at checkout, promo code REBS, R-E-B-S, and 50% off your annual sub. And then you can come hang with us and talk about Ole Miss all day, every day, because that's all we do. Trey Harris, Goat Conversation, among other things, coming on Wednesday. Until then, thank you so much for joining me. Be good to each other. Take care of each other. God bless.